I'm sure you've thought about this a lot and with some of the challenges. So what's one, I don't want to ask you what's the solution for college football, but if you could change one thing about it or make one change right now, what would it be? The cal- I don't, I like the portal. Yeah. I like NIL. Um, I wish I had NIL when all these Fresno people were in my jersey and I was getting $471 a month, including <laughs> Pell Grant. You know what I mean? Like, I was broke, broke, and I was married. My wife had to stop being the captain of the swim team for a future Olympic swim coach to go coach swimming so we could have $1,400 and 71 or $1,400, yeah, just about $1,500 a month to live off of in college. Um, so I love that these kids have the opportunity to have a little extra money in their pocket. Um, it's the timing of it all. It's, and I always, I've said this to my staff, I've said this to the players. You know, Tony Dungy, I learned a lot from Tony. One of the best things I learned from him was making wise decisions, mm-hmm. not making emotional decisions. And at the end of every season, he would, he would in a team meeting would say, hey guys, this is going to end one of two ways. We're going to win the Super Bowl. And when you win the Super Bowl, everybody thinks has too high of an opinion of themselves. And they're emotionally wrapped up in themselves. They're all legends in their own mind. It'll happen to you guys too one day when you win the Super Bowl. The flip side of that is if you don't win the Super Bowl, you're miserable. Mm -hmm. Like (laughs) knives in the eyes miserable. If you're a true competitor. If you're a true competitor, you've invested everything you have into trying to win the last game of the year. And you don't win that last game, you should be miserable. And I always make the joke, and my wife will roll her eyes and say, you know, when we lost, if we didn't win the last game there, my wife was ugly, I didn't like my kids, my food <laughs> didn't taste good, I was grumpy all the time, for about two weeks. Yeah. And so Tony would say, don't make any decisions for two weeks. Mm-hmm. That, I think this is a great time to spend your money and go to Mexico, go to Hawaii, go play golf, go fishing. Whatever mm-hmm. you do, get away from football when it's over for two weeks and don't make any decisions. And then process it all, then come back. Yeah. and make some decisions. I think that's just a good life principle for all of us, right? Yeah. Don't make any big life decisions right after something very dramatic happened. Yeah. Well, when's the portal open? Yeah. Right after, right after. the yeah. season. Yeah. When everybody, coach, player, DFOs, student workers, everybody's emotional. Yeah. Everybody's heartbroken. Good or bad. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. like not making wise yeah. decisions. And now you add money into that and you're going to get a lot of poor decision making by us too. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden, a kid that's you know week seven, man, this guy's a good player, he's great, mm-hmm. drops a ball in week twelve, and all of a sudden he's the worst player, and, you're, play trying, and <laughs> you're trying to replace him in the portal. Yeah, right. So I first thing I I, I wanted to make sure I was being true to my word. So I went back and cut ups were so important to me because I just started grinding through cut ups on our team. Yeah. I wanted to have a very clear perspective of our team. Mm-hmm. Um, I start watching practice clips. We have a lot of really young, good young players. We play 24 freshmen or retro freshmen. Jeez. So we have a lot of really yeah. good young players. So I back and watch these players in practice. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I want to make sure I'm value, valuing them correctly mm-hmm. and not being emotional Emotional when, boom, 3,000 kids pop up there. And yeah. you're like, oh, that kid's better than my kid. Well, no, no, hold on a second. Yeah. Let's evaluate our players. Let's have a non-emotional evaluation. Mm-hmm. about them let's grade them mm-hmm. let's make sure i did my staff every staff member had to do a big time and my evaluations are relentless now like they are big time really? evaluations yeah. um, that i make the staff do so i take mine i take the staff and now i have a composite mm-hmm. of the intangible makeup of the kid that i'm already coaching the physical traits the vision for this player mm-hmm. the mission for them to get there their ceiling and their floor mm-hmm. I'm like okay now I'm not emotional anymore. I know who my yeah. team is. Okay, now start cutting up the portal. And it was amazing, all these kids that jumped in the portal, that as I started watching cut-ups, I'm like, yeah, that's a good player. He's not better than mine. Yeah. That's a good player. He's not better than mine. That's a good player. not better than mine. Mm-hmm. He might have more experience. He might be at a bigger logo school. He might have had more stars coming out of high school. Yeah. But an objective evaluation mm-hmm. of my players, opposed to the players I was watching, um, now I can make some, some wise decisions in that process. And then there's the economic piece we really talked about. Now, I will say this. I've had players in my exit meetings knowing I was doing that that were really appreciative of that. Yeah. I can think of five kids that sat in those chairs and were like, Coach, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you're not just running on to the next thing, yeah. that you really know who I am. Because I share those evaluations with those players. Yeah. 
like, hey, you are a high ceiling mid floor player. You're still young, early in your development. Mm -hmm. Your traits put you in the NFL, these metrics. Here's my vision for who you're going to be next year. Yeah. Here's the plan for you as we move forward. And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think that's why we haven't been killed in the portal because at least they know we're giving them honest feedback and we're evaluating them before we make some knee jerk reaction to go jump into the portal. Yeah. So these three weeks, I know it's a dill for answer, long winded answer. These three <laughs> weeks are crazy when you're not just going, oh, there's a cute little toy in the portal. Let's yeah, bring him in on an OV. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing with the portal is like, it just moves so fast, yeah. right? Like if a guy is the portal, you got to make a decision quick huh? or else he's, or, or you don't. don't, or you don't. Uh, to, or to you your just point. make a decision you don't. To your like. point. You guys know I love football. And this football season, I've been trying to find a new way to bet on sports. I'm sick of using casinos, the traditional way to do it. And I found the best way to do it. Had to tell you guys about it. It's on Cut. Cut is the game-changing social betting platform. Look no further. This is where you got to be. It's a peer-to-peer -peer betting playground. So put your money where your mouth is. It's time to fire on sports on the best new app. I've been looking for a long time. And I found it. It's on Cut. Use my promo code ADAMB and get a 10% deposit match at Cut.com. That's Cut.com. K-U-T-T. Com. Use my code Adam B for a 10% deposit match when you deposit money. Our personnel department does an incredible job. Uh, coach runs in the office, hey, we need this guy cut up. And they are all hands on deck yeah. from five. They all get here about five in the morning. They all leave about eight, nine o'clock at night. <laughs> and it is nonstop. Yes, sir. Boom, 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 boom. I want 36 worst place. Great. Done. 10 minutes later, 36 worst place. I want 150 targets. Great. 150 targets. I want mm -hmm. versus opponent. Blah, 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 that opponent. And because of technology, we do invest a lot in technology. Um, we're able to get these things turned around really well, really quickly. And what, in my opinion, do a really thorough job uh, of our evaluations. People forget, one of my best friends is Trent Balke, who's the general manager of the yeah. Jaguars. He built that 49ers team from mm -hmm. the dust. I know it didn't end well for him, but he's mm -hmm. been one of the best GMs in football at two different spots yeah. now. And I've learned a lot of my evaluation tools from him. Yeah. And thoroughness is one of them. It's not just taking a small sample size yeah. to evaluate a player. Um, so we do a very, very large sample size in our evaluations of players. So therefore, we can't make the quick decisions. Yeah. So we have in real time been evaluating a player and lost on a portal kid. And my answer to that is that's okay. Yeah. Because if to, to actually sign that kid, we would have had to make a knee-jerk reaction no, no. Yeah. without the yeah. full evaluation and 4-4 four, four transfers you're stuck with. Because yeah. I also want to know path court towards graduation. I want to know something from their high school. Coach, teacher, I want to know something about their background. I want to know about their family. Yeah. I want to know about their decision making. I want yeah. to know um, do they smoke a bunch of weed yeah. or do they not? You know, yeah. I want to know a bunch Medical. of different things. Yeah. Medical. Yeah. I want to know everything. I want yeah. to composite. Yeah. Um, I always call it a dossier. Like, yeah. give me a dossier on a player. If you can't, then we're not going to sign them. And sure, yeah. we're going to lose out on some really talented players. But what we're not going to do is bring in cancers.